Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, this is the third time I've tried to make this video, and I always seem to make it an hour long, which is not my intent. So this video will most likely be uploaded in two parts. Um, so this is part one. Welcome to part one. Um, so today is Thursday, January, or excuse me, Friday, January 5th. Um, Monday marks two weeks since delivery. Um, so, so much to say about that. Um, so, you know, last update was 39 weeks. I actually did not upload that video until after delivery. Uh, I just got sidetracked and whatnot. So I do appreciate everybody's comments and, and suggestions on handling um, my nerves and uh, all that. Uh, it went swimmingly. Uh, agency owner was there and uh, everything went perfect. Uh, he, you know, uh, was very polite. Uh, my my mom was there. My intended mother was there. Um, her husband, I didn't know it at the time, but her husband actually wasn't in town um, until Christmas Day. So he actually did not arrive in the country until after his son was born. Um, so, but it went great. I mean, it was really nice to see her. I had not seen her in over a year. Uh, she had her sister-in-law with her and the nanny that is staying with them while they're stateside. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my doctor did a little quick sneak peek ultrasound so that she could see the baby beforehand and just something to be just, you know, a little welcome to America type thing. <laughs> um, so it went great. Um, we ended up not spending a whole lot of time outside of the doctor's office together. I offered to take him to the hospital and get him acquainted with the hospital. And, um, she said she was okay. She didn't need that. Um, she said she wanted me to get home and get some rest. She was very concerned about my resting and making sure that I was comfortable. Um, it was very funny because she's teeny tiny, you guys. Like, she seriously weighs maybe as much as one of my legs. I mean, the girl can't be 100 pounds soaking wet. And she comes up to me in my armpit. <laughs> and she was, like, holding me by the arm and, like, escorting me places. Like, I don't know how to explain it. She was trying to, um... She was trying to like help me walk places, like support me almost. Uh, it was real. It was real funny. My daughter said afterwards, after the baby was born, she did the the same thing. And my daughter goes, "It's so cute to watch her try to help you walk places." She goes, "Mom, if you fall, she can't catch you. You'll fall and smash her because <laughs> she's so tiny. <laughs> like she's smaller than my twelve year old. She's just so teeny tiny. But it was just so funny. It was so cute. Um, we exchanged some some gifts, some Christmas gifts. Um, she got gifts for the kids and for me and my husband. And oh, excuse me, I." had gotten some things that I really liked when I was a new mom um, for her, like those sleeper sacks with the opening in the bottom. So the baby um, in the middle of the night, you need to change him. You just pull the little dress up and uh, it changes diaper. You don't have to fiddle with snaps or buttons or anything like that. So um, I got her some of that, some of the bottles that I liked and whatnot. So um, I didn't see her again until Christmas Day. Uh, we had a very uneventful Christmas Eve. We do our Christmas Eve celebration, um, for our Christmas celebration on Christmas Eve. We have our dinner and our family over and we wrap the rest of our gifts and put them under the tree. Um, let me back up because, you know, we, I, I really didn't want to be induced. It was really important to me that I let my body do this on its own. Um, I've mentioned it before, you know, I was induced with all of my children and I did not enjoy it. Um, excuse me, I'm not one who's big on medications and injections and, and putting medications into my body in the first place. Um, and I really didn't want to force this. I wanted to let my body do what it know, knows how to do. I'm trying to get that glare off my eyes. Um, let my body do what it knows how to do and let it do it on its own at its own pace and let, you know, my body and this baby call the shots. And that was really important to me because I'm bringing this life into this world for this woman, and I want to. I want to make sure that he's ready. Not, well, you know, you're 39 weeks. Let's go ahead and do this. I. I, I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that it would have worked, and that everything would have been okay. But I just really didn't want to take that route. So I made that very clear at my very first OB appointment. I'm gonna try to find another place to sit while I do this video. 
Maybe I'll go back down on the floor. Um, we got new sheets. See, <laughs> look at Sedona's gonna join us. Oh, that's good. And Pete. Um, hey, PD. Hey, man. Um, we, you know, so that was really important to me to, um, look at, she sees herself in the camera. <laughs> um, go on, get out of here, ding dong. Um, it was really important to me to let it happen on its own and let it work on its own. I, I really wanted that to happen. And, um, so having that said, we planned it anyway. You know, I had to balance between my wishes and functionality basically you know we live two and a half hours from the hospital you know I needed to deliver in a NICU the closest NICU is Las Vegas Las Vegas is where I'm contracted out of I live right on the border of Nevada and Arizona but it's still a two and a half hour drive to my hospital and knowing that and knowing that it was Christmas and we have the dogs and we have you know two crazy boxers that needed to be boarded and you know, kids to deal with. We had to have a plan. My husband was very adamant about having a plan and um, making sure that all of our little ducks were in a row before we got up there. So he's like, look, I just want to have Christmas. I want to go up to Vegas, have this baby, give him to his parents, and then come home. And we need a plan to do that, so you need to schedule an induction. Like, here's what I think is best, and that's essentially what we did. So um, he thought it would be a good idea to have Christmas come up Tuesday, the day after Christmas, the 26th. I was due on the 27th and um, induced that night so that I could deliver through the night because we knew it would be quick. Usually, I mean, every other delivery has been really fast. And um, and then the next day I would be able to rest on, on the 27th, I'd be able to rest and he could occupy the kids. That way the kids could sleep through the delivery part and he wouldn't have to worry about corralling them. They're older kids, you know, my youngest is 12, my oldest in the house that went with us is 16, my oldest boy moved out last month. And um, he, he said, you know, then I don't have to worry about them being at the hospital and keeping them entertained and I have nowhere to put them and yada, yada, yada. And it's like, okay, that makes sense. So that's what we did. We planned it just like that. I was supposed to go in on the night of the 26th at eight o'clock for induction. So had you asked me two weeks ago that anything but that exact plan was going to happen, I would have said, nope, that's the plan. That's what we're doing. Um, and no questions asked. It would have been fine. Um, my last visit when I met the parents, I told, or the visit before that, excuse me, the visit before that when we had, we had scheduled the induction, um, my 38 week appointment, I, uh, told doc, you know, Hey, my kids have finals next week, so we can't induce next week because Wednesday, or excuse me, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they have finals. Two of my kids are in high school. See, there's one of the crazy boxers. Maddie, get down. Go on. And, um, she don't listen. Um. I said, I can't pull them out of school, so we can't do it that day. They have to be there for finals. And he goes, and this weekend, the weekend over Christmas Eve, I'm out of town. He goes, I'm going to San Francisco with my daughter to see my parents. Um, so I'm out of town through Christmas Eve until about four o'clock in the afternoon. And I was like, all right. He, and then he, I told him my husband's idea and he said, that is a perfect plan. So let's just plan it like that. Um, so that's what we did. and. There was no question. Christmas Eve comes, my mom came down, we had dinner. We had dinner very early, like two o'clock. Everything was fine, I wasn't contracting. You know, they still didn't check me in the office. So I told them there's no need for it, I'm okay. Um, can you lay down, ding dong? <laughs> they don't listen, sorry. Come on, get out of here. Get. Um, no. And, um, we had dinner, like I said, very early. We had it at like two o'clock and uh, we gave my mom her presents and she gave us ours. And um, she said, you know, would you mind terribly if we stayed the night that wasn't planned on? She goes, she goes, um, you know, we've got some stuff we've got to do at, at our house in a, in a town real close to where we live at. Um, and I don't want to drive all the way back up to Kingman just to drive all the way back down tomorrow with the butt crack of dawn. She goes, I figure we can just get up, have Christmas morning, and then after Christmas morning, uh, we'll head over and deal with the house. And I say, yeah, that's totally fine. I made room for her and everything went off without a hitch. I felt fine. I felt perfectly fine. Um, not anything different. I was still breathing like freight train, not nearly as bad as I was when I was at work all the time, but um, 
the mild occasional contractions. I didn't notice any more dis discomfort, nothing like that. Um, I had joked this entire time that, you know, I just need to make it through Christmas morning. If I can make it through Christmas morning, everything's going to be fine. Um, anytime after Christmas morning, he can come. Oh, Lord, did I just not even know how literal this baby was going to take that. Um, so we got up. I slept really crappy Christmas Eve night. Um, my husband says that I'm making it up or that I'm just fitting the situation to whatever. But um, I normally, on a normal night, I was waking up like at one o'clock in the morning. I was having some insomnia. I would go to sleep. I would sleep until roughly one o'clock every single day. And I'd wake up at one o'clock, like somebody turned the light switch on. Just think, I'm awake. Oh my God, I'm, I'm awake. And I would stay awake for hours. Well, went to bed maybe 9, 9.30ish, Christmas Eve night. Um, we put all our presents out, did all our stockings, all that stuff, and um, went to bed. I woke up at like 11.30 and I was like, Ugh, why am I awake? And managed to fall back asleep. Um, I remember being like, God, I'm just uncomfortable. Excuse me, which wasn't anything abnormal. Um, and then, excuse me. I remember I woke up around 1, 1 30, somewhere between like 1 and 2, same thing. And I remember that time I got to go to the bathroom and I thought, I don't feel good. I feel, ugh. I just felt kind of, ugh. I managed to go back to sleep and I, I told myself, I probably just feel like crap because I haven't eaten since 2. Um, we did not have any more food after we ate at 2. We had our, like I said, we had our dinner really early and... I mean, we had a lot of food, so I didn't eat anything that night. So I was like, I think I'm just hungry because I just didn't feel good. Like here, my stomach, it just didn't feel good. And so I thought it's probably just because I didn't eat anything. Went back to sleep. And I think I woke up like 3.30 to 4 o'clock-ish. And at that point, I woke my husband up for whatever reason. Like I think I was just getting up to the bathroom and he woke up. He was like, well, it's four o'clock, I'm awake. So we just laid in bed. I got up and went to the bathroom. We just laid in bed and, you know, chit-chatted and giggled and reminisced about Christmas's past and how, you know, previous years we'd have little ones running in and like, holy crap, we're going to go have a baby tomorrow and this is actually happening. And I mean, just talk, talk, you know, got up about five o'clock and we opened gifts uh, took us about an hour to open all the gifts and I had a very nice Christmas. Uh, my mom and my stepdad were there and we haven't had them down for a couple of years. Just um, last year we, we had to rearrange Christmas because of work and the year before it just we just kind of reined it all in and had just us and so it was nice to have them here and I know my mom and my stepdad enjoyed it. And we were sitting, I was sitting on the couch and my husband had the uh, a customary black trash bag that he was filling up with all the wrapping paper that had exploded all over our living room. And, um, I got a contraction and it wasn't anything different than normally it happened. It was the same kind of contraction that I'd had every other single time. It did not hurt more. The only thing that was different about it was I felt like it lasted a little bit longer. Excuse me. I am not sleeping well right now. Um, it, I felt like it lasted a little bit longer than they normally did. And it was very funny. I mean, because it didn't hurt. It was just like a kind of take your breath away. Just like it normally had been. Like I'd been complaining about it. It was just, it was really tight and it was like, a, ugh, ugh, it's tightening up again. And then, um, my mom was sitting across from me. There's like a little, we call it the princess chair because it's really where my dogs sit. But, um, she was sitting in the like oversized love seat that's across the room and she you know she hasn't really been around during this pregnancy she's probably only seen me twice during the whole process this is the third time she'd seen me pregnant well, last time I think she was down and I saw her I was like 20-ish weeks like I was mid-pregnancy so I was I just looked fat um didn't look pregnant but I was pregnant that day I mean whoa was a big girl um and so she hadn't been exposed to me in these contractions and I didn't have them with my kids. I was 21 when I had my youngest. And so she was around for all of them. And, um, I lived with her with my first two and she, you know, I'd never been like this. So she looked at me and she was like, are you, you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like touching it. I'm fine. It's just a contraction. It's no big deal. 
and it just kind of lingered and she goes I remember her face kind of went like this she was like are you sure you're okay and I said yeah I'm fine and as I was saying this my husband was telling the kids who were sitting around us on the couches and he's picking up trash he's telling them hey guys look I know it's Christmas Day but Christmas is over we've opened our presents and you know we have a little bit of time this morning we'll have some breakfast honey do you want me to make you some sausage he told me he asked me if I wanted some sausage and I said yes I don't remember him asking me that um, and he he's telling the kids you know we now it's all about mom we got to work on getting packed today we got to get the house ready we got stuff we got to do today because tomorrow morning we're gonna get up and go to Vegas and have this baby and as both of these conversations were going on I was sitting there just like this like uh, and I felt my pants get wet and I felt like my whole stomach just decompress and I went oh my god my water just broke. It was so funny because it was like something out of a movie scene. <laughs> you see in the movies, the big, the woman at the grocery store and she gets a big puddle underneath her. That was me all over my couch. <laughs> there was so much water, you guys. Oh my goodness. I have never had my water break on its own. The doctor's always done it, so I always knew it was coming. There is nothing <laughs> like your water breaking on its own and a small flood coming out of your girly parts. Oh my gosh. It was the weirdest sensation. I knew instantly what was going on. It was so weird though because there was so much water coming out of my vagina and I couldn't, I mean, I didn't even try to stop it because I knew if I tried to stop it, it would just make more come out, but it would wave and then it would wave again. And I was like, oh my God. And my husband looked at me and he stopped. Everybody stopped and looked at me. My mom said my face was just like utter shock. And, and my husband goes, are you joking? And I go, oh my God, no, I'm not joking. And I just remember started laughing and I stood up and like did the like, the open legged hobble um, into here, into that little door over there, into my little potty closet. And I was like, I gotta clean myself up. It was just flowing out. I have never experienced anything like it before. It was crazy. I was not in pain. I was not having regular contractions that I knew of. Um, the contractions did start to pick up at that point, but they still, they didn't hurt. I just felt them, they were just tightening up. Um, I spent about 45 seconds on the toilet of it flowing into the toilet and I went, I gotta get in the shower, I can't do this. My pants were soaked like somebody had sprayed me with a water hose. There was a trail of fluid from the living room all the way to the bathroom, from the bathroom back over to the shower. It was insane. Um, I stood in the shower and tried to clean up and it just kept coming. <laughs> It was crazy. Eventually it slowed down. Um, when I got myself clean, uh, I had my mom, my mom came in and helped me and my husband ran around like a chicken with his head cut off getting us packed because we weren't even packed. Like my suitcase was ready, but with the bare essentials, like it didn't have any extra clothes. It had a pair of pajamas, my brand new packet of granny panties for post delivery, maxi pads, and my um, travel to toiletries, my contract and my pump. Like it had almost nothing in it. Uh, I had not packed any clothes because I did not buy a lot of maternity clothes and I didn't want to take one of my two pairs of jeans that fit and put them in a suitcase so I only had one pair of jeans. Same thing with the shirts because I only had like four or five shirts and I, I cycled through them um, and so I didn't want to take those away. Um, so it was, my husband had, my husband wasn't packed at all. My kids had the same thing like basic basic change of clothes in case something like this happened and I was at work when it happened and they had to just run home and grab stuff or if he was at work and he had to run home and grab stuff um, and so we were completely unprepared for this completely unprepared and that is my own damn fault because I know babies come when they want but it never even crossed my mind that this would actually happen on its own that my body would go into labor on its own um, so we, I mean, we were just all functioning on the assumption that, nope, we're just going to be induced. No big deal. Um, I was 39 weeks and five days when my water broke on Christmas. Um, so he ran around and got everything packed. My mom helped me in the shower, helped me get cleaned up. I had to braid my hair. Uh, we plugged up the hole a little bit with some towels and when the first towel got saturated, um, the baby must have plugged up the hole because I wasn't leaking quite as much after that one. Um, and, um, you know, I made phone calls. I, I, 
messaged my parents and my agency and my WeChat app and let them know my water had broke. I messaged my agency coordinator and apologized to her because it is now that my water broke Arizona time, 6, 10 in the morning on Christmas. Um, it's 6.30 in the morning and I'm messaging my coordinator, I'm sorry to do this today, but my water just broke. <laughs> Merry Christmas is what I told her. <laughs> um, and then um, I messaged my birth photographer and I uh, text messaged my doctor and apologized profusely because it's only 5.30 his time. I don't even think he's out of bed. He's not on call and he's spending Christmas with his daughter. <laughs> I'm such a nice person. Um, and uh, I called my unit and told them, hey, my water just broke. Um, and they were so excited. It was very funny to hear them so excited in the background, like everybody just cheering that my water broke. Um, and told them that I'd be on my way. Uh, uh, figured out who was on that day and who I would like to have my nurse. And um, I am happy to say that uh, my dear friend Debbie, you guys met her in the transfer video, was working on Christmas. I had really hoped to have Debbie there as a support person. She really wanted to be there as a support person, not as my medical person. Um, however, my two first choices, uh, one of them got put on standby, so there wasn't any patients that day, so they cut the staff on the unit. Yeah, which is normal, that's what happens. And um, Debbie was it, so I was really glad that Debbie was there. I had messaged her as well and told her my water broke. Um, and so she, she was ready for me when I got there. Um, and she was very excited about it. Um, but she got to be there for it, so she was my nurse that day, which was awesome, awesome. Um, and eventually after I got out of the shower and I was all ready and I threw some clothes in a suitcase, I looked at my husband. It's now about 40 minutes after my water broke, so it's just before 7 o'clock. And I told my husband, like, hey, we, we need to get in the car. It's time to start moving. Um, because the last couple that I had had were a little bit stronger. They were changing. They were not uncomfortable still, but I could feel them changing a little bit. And um, um, I knew if we waited any longer, they were going to start getting a lot stronger, and we weren't going to make it. Um, so he said, okay, everybody wrap it up. He had the kids zip up the, the suitcase and get their stuff in the trunk of the, the truck. Uh, and my mom and my stepdad helped me into the truck, which was really, I didn't really need a whole lot of help at that point. I was okay. It was the, more the problem of um, anytime I tried to use my belly muscles and I opened my legs, more water would come out. Um, what I didn't know until I was getting into the truck, and bear in mind, my husband, we just bought him a new truck. He has a six inch lift on it. It's huge. It's like climbing into a monster truck. Um, so it was real easy getting in when you're not in pain, <laughs> but getting out when I got to the hospital was not quite as easy. Um, my husband, while I had been in the shower, part of what he was doing, it was real funny, um, because we did just buy this truck and it is in fantastic condition. It's a 2005, but to look at it, you would think it's brand new. It's got leather interior. It's so nice. And we didn't want to mess up the seats. <laughs> um, my husband had taken a big, huge black trash bag, cut it apart, and made a waterproof barrier on his seat so that when we flew over his leather, <laughs> and by some miraculous miracle, we have a drawer with puppy pads in it. Why we even have puppy pads, I don't know, because my dogs are all house trained. Even when they were puppies, they went outside. Um, and he, my mom, like, put puppy pads down and then my husband put more towels down and then I guess he had like four or five more towels in the back seat with the kids so in case this baby came really fast and we had to stop and deliver we had towels <laughs> it was just too much everybody had water like it was just crazy it was still dark it's now seven o'clock we get in the thing um I'd forgotten my glasses we had to turn around when I mean, we were just down the street when we turned around but we turned around and came back on my glasses so I would be able to see while we were up there um and I remember telling him as we were pulling down the street um hey, you can't drive like you normally do. You can't be a crazy maniac because I'm not going to tolerate it on this drive up here. Uh, even more so in his truck now because it's so much higher. I feel like it goes like this. Like it, I feel it like, almost like when we take corners, I feel like it's going to topple over because it's lifted so high. Um, and I, I don't tolerate that normally, even not pregnant. I tolerated it less with his jerky kind of, he drives kind of like a race car driver. Uh, that's what I feel like. And it makes me real nauseous. And I told him, I'm not going to tolerate that. You can't drive like that. Um, that's probably the last thing I remember. Um, I have a few memories of the drive to Las Vegas. Um, I don't remember much of it. Our town on a busy day takes maybe 20 minutes to get from one town to the other. We have 
one highway that is the main uh, road through it. It runs along the lake. And um, there's maybe like 10 stoplights on it total from one end to the other, I think. It is, it's not a big town. We have one high school. It's a tiny little town. And um, get down, please. Go on. Get. And um, we, uh, we made it to the edge of town. I remember at the edge of town, my husband told me it was at the edge of town. I just remember telling my husband. Um, he said we were passing Walmart because Walmart's all the way out there. He said, and you told me, I don't know why you're driving so conservatively now. You never drive like this. You need to go faster. I remember looking over at the speedometer and he was going like 65. He said in reality he was going like 80. Um, but I remember being upset with him. I felt like he should be going faster. And that's pretty much all I remember. I remember vaguely crossing the railroad tracks and I remember a few spots in between. Um, I remember telling my husband to, or not my husband, my daughter to answer the text messages that were coming in. I remember vaguely telling her to tell Debbie who I was texting or my daughter was texting for me to have my mother effing epidural ready when I got there, something I was not planning on having. Um, I remember a lot of discomfort on my way up there. Uh, and I remember giving him directions to the hospital because he didn't know how to get there uh, once we were in Las Vegas. He kept saying that he hopes he gets pulled. He, he help, hoped he'd gotten pulled over, like he was hoping to get pulled over. Because I told him, I said, it's Christmas morning. There'll be nobody on the roads. I said, and it's early Christmas morning. Nobody's going to be on the roads. Um, it's going to be an easy drive. I can tell you that. Um, and I was right. There was nobody, not even on the freeways. At, I think we got there at like 7.30 their time. Well, six, yeah, 7.30, almost 8 o'clock their time. And um, there was nobody. But he said, I was hoping that I would get pulled over. He said, because he went like 93 the entire way. For reference purposes, it takes me about two and a half hours to drive to my hospital from my house. Maybe two, two and 45. Um, he got there in an hour and 50 minutes. Uh, he said he went about 93 the entire way and did not slow down. He ran all the red lights once we got off the freeway. Um, he goes, there's a few. There, he goes, I stopped at the first one and you yelled at me for stopping and why was I waiting? And that was all it took. Um, and I remember, I remember at that point telling him, we need to be there now because now it's happening now. Um, yeah, and so we got to the hospital and my kids went in and got a nurse from the triage area and she came out and with her wheelchair and it was, I've never been so happy to see a nurse in my life. I bawled and my husband had to lift me out of the truck because as I said, getting into the truck was a lot easier than getting out of the truck. And I was in so much pain. I had, it was so different this time. There was so much more back pain, like lower back pain. I'd had that previously. I don't remember which kid I had it with, but I remember I had it with one of my kids, but this was different. I remember with my kids, the contraction pain started very low in my pelvis and then it gradually kind of moved up to the top of my uterus and it incurred like my whole uterus was involved in it. I did not feel that this time. This time all of the pain was in my lower back like you're getting period cramps and my lower pelvis like you're getting period cramps and they were just horrific. Um, my kids said that uh, I was like banging on the inside of the car the entire way up there. They said I kept yelling at them. He said they said they would like breathe and I would yell at them to be quiet. Uh, my husband said my head basically stayed up where the head uh, headrest is between the headrest and the door right here, and my arms were pushed down against. And he said you were kind of just like arched in the car the whole time. Um, it was so intense and it got so intense so quickly. I am excuse me unsure how I even managed it. It was insane how uncomfortable it got how quickly and that happened previously with my other kids and I knew it would but this was just so different and I think it was just different because it was not forced uh, it was very very different so when I got there I would finally you know had grown accustomed to the position I was sitting in and I didn't want to move and I was not happy about moving at all um, so I had a hard time getting out of the truck even and then they took me in and they took me straight to a room um, I apparently scared some of them because I had, had had the towel tucked between my legs and my shorts or in my sweatpants. And so they thought I had delivered the head in the car and I said, it's just a towel. Stop talking. I remember telling everybody, stop talking because they were like cheering as I was coming around the corner. I'm like, just stop talking. Um, and then they got me to a room. So, um, yeah, that was, that was the ride up here. It was an insane ride, an insane ride. So... All right, I will um, upload this one, and then I'm going to do a second video for the second part. 